is our nutrition affecting our fertility? Well, so, I mean, you know, at, at a fundamental level, fertility is, is a sign of good health. You know, your body's not going to let you get pregnant or, or impregnate someone if you're in, in poor health and you're, and you're not going to be able to support that baby, uh, while it's, while it's gestating. And then, you know, for the few years that it's, it's basically, you know, uh, feeble and, and needs constant, constant protection. So Hard it's, facts. It's, it might, yeah. might hurt people to hear that, but there you go. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's it's um, you know it's it's very difficult. You know, it's, it's a very dangerous time. And so, if you, if your body, you know, doesn't feel that that you have, if you're not healthy, you're not going to be able to do that. And if you're not getting enough nutrition, you're you're not going to be able to do that. And and you'll all die. And and that's a that's a problem. So that's not going to perpetuate the species. And so, uh, you know, we have we have developed ways of of shutting down these processes. If you if your body doesn't feel that like, no, no, like so so women they get their their body fat percentage too low, you know they stop having their period, um, and that can be for a number of reasons. It can be for you know why how they're uh, going about getting their their body fat percentage down, and that can also screw up their hormones and damage their health in, in other ways. Um, by, you know, vegan diets or, um, you know, starving themselves. If you, if you, and that really messes up your hormones. A lot of people I know in the, the bodybuilding community, the female bodybuilding community, mm. they will eat in such a way that this causes a lot of hormonal disruption and, and they lose their periods and they feel awful. And so that so is, did, a sign did, 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 is that because they've got too low a body fat or a combination? Not necessarily. I think it's a combination. I think the combination of, of, uh, of, um, you know, they're starving. So they're trying to cut down and they're, they're eating basically no fat. And, you know, as we've spoken about before, cholesterol is a precursor to all of your major hormones like estrogen, progestogens, uh, even testosterone, cortisol, you know, most of your, your major hormones are all, uh, made from cholesterol. And so if you're, if you're dieting and you're starving yourself and you're only eating plants, you're not getting cholesterol and you're not going to be making hormones and your body's going to be very unhealthy. Um, so you're getting your hormonal balance, right. Making sure you're properly fed, you know, having this caloric intake and this, this caloric, um, you know, continued caloric, uh, not excess, but, but having it, having it be optimized, you're, you're going to optimize your body and all the different sorts of systems that need to click into place for your body to say, okay, yeah, we can do this. This will, this is, this will be okay. Mm -hmm. So you have to do all that. And, and obviously if you're eating what your body was designed to eat, namely meat and fat, then your body is going to run optimally. So that's, that's the first step. And that, and that's sort of everything sort of comes back to that point, but you know, we can go through things a little more, um, a little more in detail. You know, we, we look at this for men as well. Um, vegan men or uh, men that eat a lot of uh, plants and, and low meat and fat, well, they're going to screw up their testosterone. They have lower testosterone. They also have lower sperm counts, a lot lower sperm counts. And then the motility and morphology of the sperm, which are very, very important for fertility, for male fertility, are all screwed up on vegan and vegetarian diets and low meat diets and low uh, fat diets because of a lot of different things. But uh, one of the things is, is hormonal dysregulation. And so they're not going to be as healthy. They're not going to be able to uh, conceive with a woman, even if, even if she's very healthy. And then on the other side, if the woman's sort of doing a similar thing, she's going to be uh, very poor off. So you have, you have much lower, uh, you know, uh, conception rates in vegans and vegetarians. You have a much higher rate of miscarriage in vegans and vegetarians because they're just not getting the requisite nutrition and they're bringing in a lot of plant poisons that are going to be harmful for that fetus as well. You have a lot more uh, birth defects and uh, developmental abnormalities. And, um, and this has actually caused a rash of uh, increased levels of unwanted abortions, So miscarriages and then actual unwanted voluntary abortions because the child is so misformed and and developmentally stunted or deranged that 
you know, they get cautioned that look, this isn't, this isn't ethical to continue this pregnancy because this child is just going to suffer and die if he even come, if they even come to term. And so they make the very hard decision to abort the pregnancy, even though they wanted the pregnancy and they wanted to keep the pregnancy. That is, that's a devastating thing uh, for a family to go to. I, I have two, absolutely. I have two personal family friends that have, that um, they're, they've had a family member that have uh, had to do that, unfortunately, just in, just in the last couple of years. And so that, that's a devastating thing to have to go through. And we're hearing more and more about it as well. Yeah. And, it, and, and, and that's, and that's, and these people, again, were trying to conceive for years. And so you, there's already a marker of, of, um, of some sort of health issue. Um, there's, uh, there's a Dr. Kiltz, um, who's uh, OBGYN, you know, owns a bunch of fertility clinics uh, throughout America. And he was, he was saying the exact same thing. And he actually uh, is a proponent of a carnivore diet for women's wow. health and fertility. And, and he was saying as well, like this is, this is the baseline level of health is being able to get pregnant naturally. And if you don't have that, it means that there is a health issue. So it's not that there could be, there is a health issue. And so that's not something that's nice to hear because, because, you know, it, it, we don't, we don't like to feel uh, like we're not adequate to do this, but you know, it, it can be something that's very easily fixed as well. Yeah. And so, it, it can, it can be a wake up call in a way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if, if, you, yeah. if you hit with this huge hurdle, it's like, okay, well, that's the impetus to make a change. Yeah. And so, and, and that's the thing, you know, I, I don't, you know, I, I've never gone through that, that sort of issue. So, um, you know, I, I can only, I can only guess how, you know, physically and emotionally taxing it is to go through these, these processes no, I can imagine and, and, be, and be very disappointed. But I think that it's a very positive thing because it, it's, it's, it, it can be reversed very easily. There are a ton of women just going on a keto diet, let alone a carnivore diet, and then a carnivore diet as well. And they haven't conceived in 10 years. And now they're sort of perimenopausal. And all of a sudden they have this late pregnancy uh, as a surprise. That's happened to a few of my friends as well. And this is something we're seeing uh, happen all throughout you know, the carnivore community. People are, and, and the keto as well, because keto has been going on for longer. And they've had more people uh, involved in it over the last you know, couple of decades. And there are people that go on this ketogenic diet and, and they're perimenopausal. They're having infrequent periods. Then all of a sudden they get regular periods uh, again and their hormonal health is, is fixed. And then all of a sudden they're getting pregnant and they're like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> and like, um, you know, and, that, and that's uh, something that, that is happening because now you're healthy again. You're, you're much more healthy uh, than you thought you were. Um, a couple main issues with pregnancy. Uh, the main, I, I, think, I think it is the main um, cause of infer infertility is something called PCOS, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. I heard a lot about this. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's getting much more prevalent, which it, which it really shouldn't. But at the same time, when you look at why this happens, there's no, there's no wonder why it is happening. Polycystic ovarian syndrome looks like there's a bunch of cysts on the ovary, but they're not, they're follicles. And, um, you know, when you, you your body, your ovary, uh, you know, ovulates, it makes this follicle and that is supposed to drop one down, but now it's a whole bunch of them in there. And, but it doesn't mean that you're more fertile, actually means you're less fertile or something, something happening is deranging the process. It comes along with generally, um, excess weight, sometimes even obesity and hirsutism, which is inappropriate amount of, of hair. So they'll get facial hair, they'll get body hair. Uh, in inappropriate spots. And, um, and this is because they have high androgens. So androgens being, being, uh, you know, male, uh, male sex hormones. And so this is a problem. Um, that will obviously derange your, your ability to conceive if your hormones are, are very, very deranged like that. So what's happening? Well, we actually, we actually know now that what's causing PCOS, and we have all these drugs and all these sorts of treatments, but they, they, they don't actually go after the root cause. The root cause, as it turns out, is actually due to insulin. So when you eat carbohydrates, and this is why, carbo this is why a carnivore diet and even a ketogenic diet really helps with this, because when you eat carbohydrates, obviously your blood sugar goes up. Blood sugar is very toxic. This, this damages your body physically. And so in response, your body increases insulin. Insulin goes up, tries to get this stuff the hell out of there, but it, but it stays up. And then we, we feel tired and we're like, oh, 
my blood sugar is low. I need to eat more carbohydrates. And so, you know, you have to eat carbs or burn carbs, right? So you just keep eating carbs, keep eating carbs, and you just keep your insulin level up and it just stays up. Well, the problem with that is that, you know, women, women don't just, just produce straight estrogen. People don't, don't realize that they produce testosterone, which then gets converted into estrogen in the ovaries and Erotica. insulin blocks that. Okay. Wow. So it, it blocks, you know, it blocks the enzyme that converts testosterone into estrogen. So these women have a, an abundance of, te of testosterone and a, an paucity of estrogen. And so they will get this, this issue called polycystic ovarian syndrome. But the thing is, even if you don't get PCOS, you will still have too much testosterone, not enough estrogen. And so that's going to, that's going to make it difficult to conceive for anyone, whether or not you have PCOS, mm -hmm. but the good news is it goes away. You know, if you just, if you just stop eating carbohydrates, it. because then your, then your insulin level goes down and now your body can convert testosterone into estrogen and, and your hormones normalize and they're going to normalize for other reasons as well, because now you're getting enough cholesterol. Now you're going to be able to make enough of these hormones. Now you're not you're taking in all these, these phytoestrogens and phytohormones and, and hormone, uh, chemicals that derange your hormones as well, like in soy, there's just a ton of this stuff. And so you're going to be optimizing. Your body is just going to work the way it's supposed to. And your body is designed, you know, to procreate that, that is the meaning of life biologically. I know everyone goes searching for the meaning of life. I, there it is. It's to procreate. And, um, you know, and, and you could argue that from a, from a spiritual and personal side of things as well, but biologically, you don't, you don't need to go to Mecca, life. just tune into this podcast <laughs> and, and Andy JP will tell you right there. <laughs> the meaning of life. <laughs> no, but seriously though, but like biologically, the, the purpose of life is to procreate. That's the definition of life. It is to procreate, um, that's just, that's just what it is. And so you are designed to procreate men and women. And when you aren't able to do that, that means that there's something, there, there's a wrench in the gears and you need to find out where that is. Well, the rent, in this case, the wrench is carbohydrates, mm. but the bigger wrench are plants in general, fungi, and just not eating what we're supposed to eat. That's mm. the biggest thing. Is, I, tell, I tell you what, the, it, it's interesting how back to front we've got it in terms of say food choice, because you might think that like cupcakes and sweets are a feminine food, but you're eating yeah. these things and they're blocking testosterone turning into estrogen, making you more masculine. Um, the most feminine thing you could eat is, you know, fatty meat. Um, yeah, that, that's true. Yeah. Well, because you're going to be, you're going to be as healthy as you possibly can be. Your hormones are going to be as healthy as they, they can be. And you're going to be more of yourself. Um, another thing is that people probably have a problem with this fibroids. You run fibroids these physically get in the way of, of a baby growing there. If you have very large fibroids, you might need to get them cut out. And if you have to get too much cut out. Just quickly, what's a fibroid? Fibroid is just, uh, it's, it's just the muscle in the, in the uterus that's just grown a, it's a tumor, basically. It's just okay. a benign tumor. It's not cancer, but it's just a lump that shouldn't be there. It's growing abnormally. And so it physically gets in the way. It, it, it's a physical obstruction to the, you know, the, the purpose of that organ, which is to, you know, contain it and grow a baby. You can have, you can get pregnant with fibroids. Um, but if they get too big, that can cause real problems. They can also bleed. This is a, this is a leading cause of anemia and, um, you know, inter period bleeding, uh, and postmenopausal bleeding in women is, is fibroids because they, you know, they, they're not, they're not normal tissue. And so they can, they can just, start bleeding and just leaking blood and leaking blood. And it can be very uncomfortable as well. Um, being, you know, more pregnancies um, is associated with less uterine fibroids. And, and, you know, in the literature, they'll say it protects against uterine fibroids. I don't really know about that. I think that, you know, you're not, I, I, you know, again, it's association, it's not causation. You can't say which direction it's going. I think it's more likely that being, metabolically healthy has allowed you to get pregnant more often and have more kids. And at the same time, you're not going to be growing a bunch of fibroids because you're metabolically healthy. Because again, these fibroids, it's just like, you know, some of the, the muscle cells in your uterine, you, in your uterus has just, have just decided just to, to go a bit haywire and they start growing abnormally. But again, 
this is a symptom of metabolic ill health because this is again stimulated by too high of insulin. And so you can actually help reverse your uterine fibroids by going on a ketogenic diet or, or even better yet, a carnivore diet. And so that's, that's another thing that, that people don't, don't realize that can seriously help their fertility and just their overall health, you know, mm -hmm. uterine fibroids yeah, for uh, sure. can be quite difficult to live with. Um, but there's something you can do. You don't have to get major surgery. You we'll don't go on medication. Hysterectomy. Yeah. You, yeah. Because you, you, some of these people need hysterectomies or, or, you know, cutting these out um, and then trying to patch the uterus back together. If uh, people are past menopause, they just take the whole thing out. They're just like, Oh, just, just get it out of there. You know, which isn't, which isn't ideal, you know, it's risky and it can, you know, anyone can die from surgery, even, even, simple surgeries. And that's not a simple surgery. That's a, you know, that's a major surgery and, and you don't, you don't need to. So these things are, are signs of something going wrong in your health and specifically with hyperinsulinemia, hyperinsulinemia is, is, is a common theme, uh, in metabolic health and just overall health. This, this seems to be a driver of many, many, many diseases, uh, such as high blood pressure. This doesn't, this doesn't allow uh, the, the vessels in your artery, your arteries uh, to expand and keep them tight. And then, so this will increase your blood pressure and you have to take a bunch of medications for this. It also, uh, you know, damages your ability to, to convert testosterone to estrogen in women. And so you can get PCOS or just hormonal imbalance and then fibroids as well. So this is, this all comes back again to just eating an optimal diet for your body and for your species. And that will give you optimal health. And one of the major signs of being in good health is being able to conceive uh, naturally. Awesome. Yeah. All right. That was, that was epic. I, I really think people are going to get a lot out of that. And it's, um, as, as you kind of alluded to it, I think it should be comforting for people uh, as opposed to, um, you know, uh, I, nothing could be more devastating than not being able to fall pregnant. But if it's kind of like the canary in the coal mine and then you can improve your health for the long term and then fall pregnant, you know, that, that's a net benefit to me. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, I really appreciate you sharing that. And I think that's going to be really powerful. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. It's just sort of the, you know, the ground floor, of overall health is, is being able to conceive. And so if you're, if you're having difficulty conceiving, there could be a problem and then you should, you should see your doctor about, but you know, this should be the first, you know, the first thing to address is getting pro on proper nutrition, getting on a proper human diet on what's biologically appropriate species specific diet, which is, a, which is a high fat carnivore diet. Mm. And once you do that, your body will optimize. And there are a lot of people that are discovering carnivore or even keto because of the, you know, the insulin issues that we talked about, that's a major one, but carnivore is going to be even better. And all of these people are now finding that they're, they're easily conceiving even when they're not expecting themselves to, or, or maybe even planning to. And, and there, that's an indication that their overall health is, is much, much better. And they're going to have a lot better hormonal health. And, you know, this, this ties into, you know, health, you know, women's health throughout their life and their hormonal health developing through puberty. You know, we can get pretty uh, deranged, you know, guys and girls when we're going through puberty of just these hormones just raging through you and you get a bit, uh, a bit messed up from that, but this can normalize you. This can normalize your periods. This can normalize, uh, you psychologically as well. You don't get as, as depressed and deranged and upset guys and girls. And as going through, through menopause, this is going to optimize your hormones throughout your adult life. And then through menopause, you're going to have a much easier transition and your, your hormones are again, going to be optimized after that. And so even though you're not making estrogen and progesterone in the same amounts that you used to, they're going to be much better than they would otherwise. And so you, you find that a lot of people don't feel they even need to do hormonal replacement therapy, which can be very beneficial to a lot of people. They can feel much better for that men and women. Um, but I always caution people or at least advise them, you know, when they're in this, in this uh, category, they want to try out HRT. And they're also amenable to a carnivore diet. 
try the carnivore diet first, do it for like three months, and then just see where your hormones balance out and see how you feel. And if you're like me and you just feel great anyway, and your hormones are fine, well, then, then you're fine. You don't, you don't need to add anything, but you know, if you feel, you're going to feel a lot better anyway, but if you feel great, but your hormone levels are, you know, lower than what would be optimal. Um, and you feel like there's just, there's something missing. You can try that and you can see how it goes. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, you know, there's, there's really no literature to suggest that, um, going on HRT to physiological levels is something that's harmful because you've been at physiological levels, presumably your entire life, at least in, you know, in the early adulthood, when, when things were as healthy as they're going to get. And, you know, you didn't have these problems. Sometimes people think that, you know, you can have these growth factors going, you know, for decades longer than they normally do. And this can, uh, you know, increase cancer rates. And there's some evidence to suggest that, but there's a lot of other evidence to suggest that no, it absolutely does not. If you stay within physiological levels, but your body's going to be hormonally you know, optimized and primed even throughout, um, you know, uh, menopause and beyond, and you are going to feel a lot better uh, than you would otherwise. And then on top of that, if you need something else, then you can do that. Or if you're, if you've optimized your nutrition and you've optimized your health that way, but you're still having issues conceiving, seeing a doctor, seeing a fertility specialist that can isolate what exactly is going on, uh, it's going to be great because you've eliminated a lot of possible issues. And now you can really focus in on like, okay, what is, what is like the one or two things that mm -hmm. are still going to cause the problem, even when you've optimized your health. And so this is, this is going to set you up for, for uh, very good health and start with carbon, with carnival. That's, you know, you got to start with the carnival. Yeah, exactly. And then you'll, you'll set, you'll set the stage for optimal health mm -hmm. and, and the ability to conceive and, you know, bear the healthiest children that the world has really seen in a long time because no one's doing carnivore no, pregnancies or, or, or rearing except a few people and their kids mm -hmm. are doing phenomenally well. And they are going to be the, the genetic leaders of, uh, of the future because they're just, they're just going to have developed to such a uh, you know, greater degree. They're going to actually optimize and grow and develop to their genetic potential, which is so much better than all of all the rest of us have developed to, and they're going to be taller, healthier, stronger, you know, and, uh, and more intelligent, much more intelligent, bigger brains, better bodies. They're going to be the, you know, the ancient Greek, you know, platonic form of this, this, uh, scholar athlete is, you know, uh, you know, that's, that's extremely athletic and very intelligent. And who doesn't that, want that? Yeah. Well, I, I would hope they would want that for their kids, you know, if not, anyway.